What's up, Internet? And welcome back. I'm Chimera Complex, and I am bad at City of Heroes. Uh, when we left off, um, our hero here, Professor Leroux, uh, was investigating some gang activity, specifically the Hellions. Uh, we were tasked with beating up some Hellions until I could get one of their outfits so I could disguise myself and uh, rescue some civilians from a uh, from a gang hideout. So that is what we are on our way to do. So, this marker means that the uh, dude bros are in this area, specifically the Hellion uh, informant. There's more than one, of course, but this one's the closest. So, this ability that I use is a cone attack, meaning it's a small AoE. But uh, you may have noticed that it didn't hit this guy. Uh, that approached me from behind, which means that it's got a very limited range. Which uh, goes to show you that positioning uh, in combat is important. Alrighty. So, the objective changed, which means that, um, theoretically speaking, I did get the... Or hypothetically, I got the uniform or outfit off of his body. We're going to go in here. And we are automatically disguised. And you can see all my stuff is grayed out. I can't use any of my powers here because I don't want to blow my cover. And we're looking for evidence on the next move. So I was mistaken uh, about the uh, actual objective there. Let's see if I can... A little bit of a looking around. Looks like they're getting ready to uh, perform uh, some sort of ritual. Probably a, a summoning ritual. Like I mentioned in the last episode, uh, their funny quirk is uh, they they use their the artifacts that they steal to summon demon girlfriends. I guess we won't see them until later. So, they got a serious thing going on. They're uh, using artifacts to summon a demon that will actually cause some uh, chaos and damage to the city. So, not just a demon girlfriend this time around. We need to stop them. Let's see. Toggle my stuff back on. And... Let's call the guy, let him know what's going on. Alrighty, so I've got two objectives this time. Much like this last one mission that I just did. 
going to stop the ritual by rescuing the civilians that uh, have been kidnapped for sacrifice. But I'm also looking for clues to see who gave them this ritual in the first place. Help this lady out. I'm trying to take her purse. Can't have that. Not in my city. Alright. Alright, there is no time to lose. Let's save these people. Got ritual stuff going on. All right. So there was an example of potentially being able to hit more than one target uh, with this AOE attack, area of effect attack. Uh, it just happened to miss, so. Would have been cool if it if it actually had hit. Right. On to the next floor. There are the civilians. Right, there's a little boss guy here, Cinderburn. First real challenge here. Let's uh, heal ourselves up and pop uh, some of these inspirations. Do a little bit more damage. There we go. All right, I saved the civilians. And this is our second objective. Alrighty, so, um, this guy that's been sending us on these missions, his wife was presumed dead after the destruction of uh, this other place called Galaxy City. Uh, interesting point of fact, Galaxy City was the original starting city um, in the early stages of the game. And then there was an event that, uh, that they held that destroyed that city. And then they reintroduced the starting area as Atlas Park. Uh, I missed the very early stages of the game, personally. I didn't start playing until much later, um, so I didn't get to enjoy many of the, uh, the early installment weirdness, as it were. But anyway, this uh, person on the commu uh, communicator happens to be our man's wife. Um, we thought she was dead, so I'm connecting them now. And they are talking. She's being held prisoner by Arachnos. That is one of the main villain en uh, enemy groups in the game. We'll see them later on. Some uh, the lore drop right there. All right, I'm going to head back to him instead of calling him this time because I got to train up a little bit. Nothing major. I won't be getting any uh, powers at level three 
I'll be getting uh, some of those enhancement slots. Let's see how much experience this will get us. I got three bars. That was a huge chunk of experience. I got a merit reward, some uh, end game currency. You start collecting. Uh, a lot of these currencies pretty early on in the game gives you plenty of time to stock up. Okay, so we completed the very first story arc of the game. We uh, stopped a Hellion ritual demon summoning ritual uh, rescued some civilians and uh, now um, this is the uh, this is kind of the the core gameplay loop as you're leveling up uh, you you do you do an arc for a contact and they will introduce you to one of two new contacts so uh, you get a description of each of them so that you can decide which one you feel is best for you. I think I will, uh, I think I'll help out Officer Fields here. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Now, this is one thing um, that I appreciated about this game is that um, there is limited uh, player agency. Uh, what I mean by that is you can pick your contact, um, but once you pick that contact, you can't go back uh, and, and change change your contact. There are other contacts that you'll find throughout the game that are not necessarily introduced via your previous contact, but the ones that specifically are introduced, uh, you, you pick one and that's it. But... Um, if nothing else, it has it gives you the illusion of a freedom of choice. Uh, you do have a freedom of choice in that you can pick one or the other, but I say I call it an illusion because you can't say, for example, you know, pick one contact and then go back go back later and then talk to that other contact. They just that other contact that you did not pick just simply won't have any missions available. So. But um, if you're playing it like this, where you're not, you know, taking advantage of all the veteran rewards, you're not taking advantage of like, oh well, I've got this other character that's rich, so I'm going to just dump all of my all of my, you know, influence, infamy, information into this new character and just have the the best and just kind of plow through all of the content. Uh, you can just kind of replay and then pick different contacts with each playthrough just to get a little bit more lore a little bit more variety all 
Alrighty. So my new contact is off in that direction, but we're going to go talk to Miss Liberty. Returning to a new level. And these are the perks that I get with level three. I'm just going to get a, uh, a new row of inspiration slots. Inspirations are... Temporary buffs. You can kind of think of them like um, if this were a fantasy MMO, for example, these would be your potions. And I get to increase the number of enhancement slots. And you can, you can mix and match how you want to distribute them, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not going to be following any sort of uh, specific build. Um, I'll probably kind of, you know, respec and redistribute everything uh, at max level if I decide to keep the character. I've got a ton of characters. Uh, I may not even I may not even keep this one. I just wanted to try something a little bit different. I hadn't played around with um, the ice melee set or the um, elect. Well, I've played around with electric armor, but the big thing is I'm playing uh, what's called a scrapper. That's a melee DPS. And uh, I don't really touch scrappers a whole lot. Just each each archetype, each character class, as it were, um, they have their own unique mechanics. And so I don't play around with the scrapper a whole lot. Their their mechanic is critical strikes. So every single attack has a chance to um, deal double damage. But the trade off is that they're squishy. So. I'm just trying something new with this character. And I like the idea of, like, instead of being, like, you know, a rugged, scrappy guy that's, like, enhanced by, you know, cybernetics or, like, he's trained his whole life and, you know, he's at the peak of uh, human physicality. I like the idea of a brawler that... fights with the arcane arts you know like like it's not something that you would normally see you know the, the concept that is to say uh, usually usually when you think of a, uh, a brawler he's you know burly he's scrappy uh, you know he you know like Wolverine you know type of type of character um, and then when you when you think of a comic book character that, you know, dabbles in the arcane arts, you know, he's got a robe or he's got, you know, you or you've got, you know, on the opposite end of that spectrum, you've got your Constantine. Uh, basically just skinny guy, either in a suit or a robe or something that just casts spells from a distance or whatever. I just wanted conceptually something a little bit different from that. So this is Officer Fields. Let's see what he's got for us. All right. Things aren't getting any better with what just happened. What's going on? I've got a murder case. All right, so we've got a prominent actor um, was murdered, and uh, the actor's brother has gone missing. And this is kind of tying in with the previous arc in that these are all individuals that that were survivors of the destruction of Galaxy City, and uh, apparently there was a production uh, in the works. And uh, this officer suspects 
that the murder may have something to do with the production that was going on. So we're going to uh, speak with the detective that's on the scene. So we're going to talk to a witness and, you know, like any standard cop show, you, the witness isn't going to talk because they're afraid that uh, they're afraid that their, their, their lives will be in danger if they talk. Okay, so. Seems like uh, she's a little more receptive to my questioning because she recognizes me as, you know, a hero of the city. I may only be like street level right now, as it were, but, you know, I'm already starting to gain some recognition, it seems. Okay, so we're gonna um, we're gonna meet our next enemy group, the uh, Vasilok, named after the Doctor Vasilok. Um, their quirk is that they steal body parts, not just to like sell them on the black market, but to actually. It's kind of their take uh, on zombies. So, like, they're, they're kind of Frankenstein um, type of deal where they, you know, steal all these parts and then uh, use those parts to uh, extend, uh, you know, extend their lifespan or overcome death altogether. So we're going to meet these guys. They're pretty grody. As you can see, part of his outfit includes actual human body parts. All right. Took out that zombie without even hitting him. Or rather, in a single hit. And the sewers is where these guys like to hang out. Uh, it's easy to hide. And, wow, that guy can jump. Oh, he came back. I am not accustomed to them coming back, but it makes sense. Alrighty. So, they did a lot of uh, toxic damage to me, and I'm hurting. So I'm going to take a rest. And now you can see the indicator only affecting self. That means I can't really do anything. But I'm healing up fast. Alright. i got to defeat seven of these guys. And they respond pretty quick. So I'm going to get my ass handed to me. I can just tell. There we go. Saved by the ding. All right, I got five more that I need to beat up. All right, there's two of these guys, and just one of them hurt before. Oh, uh, this guy's lower level than me, so that's not going to be an issue. Three more to go.
Got one more, but they're usually paired up, so. Now, I haven't completed any missions for Officer Field yet. Uh, this is my first mission for him, so I do have to physically return to him. Uh, but you know what? That's okay, because I do need to head back to Miss Liberty for some additional training anyway. I'm just running by those guys. I'm not going to bother punching them. Probably smell like literal ass right now. Exploiting physics, because that's what we do. Alrighty, so we're about to complete our first mission from Officer Fields. Alrighty. Alright, so let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to talk about, any, uh, you know, any aspect of the game that you'd like me to explore as we, uh, as we play through the story on this character. And uh, we'll see you next time.